Hi. Um, I'm still messing around with improving the um, the operation of the profiler. I'm using the profiler uh, not to make ball handles now, but to uh, machine tapers, um, like taper dowels, taper pins, and um, when I was when I was working on the profiler and the main block that holds the the uh, uh, the profile fixture um, for the ball screws, I um, I'll bring it into the picture here and um, this is the block that slides on the dovetails at the back of the lathe that holds the tailstock, the new tailstock that I built and I've, I've incorporated that particular dovetail to hold the block uh, for, for the profiler and so what I did uh, to make it quick, instead of messing around with dovetails to fit dovetails, um, I just milled out the section here to the width to fit over the high point of the dovetails on the on the main block. Um, unfortunately, it was a little bit. Uh, I, I took a little bit too much off and and so um, it fits on the main block on the horizontal bar but um, because of the slackness uh, when the when the uh, roller pin is pushing on here um, I believe that it's it's moving this block because of the slackness uh, and just hot, held by one central screw that it's actually rocking uh, as it goes past the center line point and continues on along the profile edge uh, which kind of moves it over a little bit and so you don't get a true dovetail so um, I decided that this um, taper uh, attachment that I've made this profiler um, it's going to be good for making dovetails and or doing tapers uh, all I have to do is to make up a template with the um, the the angle that is required uh, for the job and just um, make a, a new profile plate and a couple of screw holes and uh, I'm ready to go. So what I thought I'd do is I thought that I would improve uh, the fit on here. And so what I'm making, um, if you look at the job I have on the mill there, um, I'm making some uh, dovetail inserts to fit inside let's see is it inside that way yeah uh, no the other way um, oh. <laughs> oh this way this way there we go you see so I'm um, I'm gonna make up two um, uh, triangular bars with a 45 degree on on the face and put them on either side and I'm gonna screw one in um, with a couple of small dowels um, as a fixed a fixed uh, dove dovetail and um, uh, come on and on the other side I'm going to make the dovetail like a jib, like a jib plate, uh, uh, and make it uh, uh, loose on a couple of dowels, and just have a screw going through here, uh, pushing the dovetail, and 
locking the the block up on the main horizontal uh, part and then all I have to do is to undo the screw here uh, adjust for a cut with the with the micrometer and then just tighten up this screw and lock that one up and there should be no movement whatsoever and it'll be easy to put on and take off so that's what I'm in the process of now I've, I've already made one and I've uh, checked it on the um, on the main the main block uh, the main tailstock block that's on the horizontal bar and it's still a bit I still need to take about maybe 20 thou off of one face so I'm gonna do that after I've made the second one um, uh, so that's what I'm in the process of doing now and um, so I got this bar uh, this is a, a, a form of brass bronze it's a, like a free cutting brass that they used to use on the auto machines for making uh, parts on the um, bar feed uh, machines and it's uh, it's not actually brass it's a little bit coppery as well um, they they used it a lot um, uh, for making components in um, thermostatic controls and stuff like that so um, I had a, a quantity of it and I thought I'd use that to make these inserts so that's what I'm doing now I've, I've, I've made a drawing and uh, the bar is half inch diameter um, and uh, I've made a drawing and placed the triangle in the center of the of the half inch circle and so now what I'm doing is just touching on the half inch diameter and uh, I can determine the amount of depth that I have to go to produce this this insert so that's what I'm doing now this uh, this actual face um, I have to come I have to move down um, 214 thou so at the moment I'm I'm at only at 61 thou so I'm gonna um, uh, continue and let this video run um, I don't know if it's really of any interest to anybody but um, it gives you maybe an idea of the, the setup uh, as you can appreciate milling out a section sticking out of the collet uh, that far uh, needs definitely needs some support at the end uh, I never did make a tail stock up for George Thomas's uh, uh, dividing head so uh, what I do is I, I shim up and, uh, and use w whatever I have to complete the job and make it safe at the same time so that's what I'm doing now I'm going to continue on um, and uh, you can see I'll, I'll, I'll probably do the three faces in separate videos um, I hope it doesn't bore anybody too much I, unfortunately I don't know how to edit so um, uh, some people seem to be interested so I'll just continue on okay right. I'm, I'm taking off about 20 thou at a time I don't want to force it too much I'm just using one of those again one of those quarter inch end mills that I like so much where the the actual in fact I'll show you one I've got one here um, a really really nice uh, end mills I like them very much and unfortunately I can't find any more I wish I'd have bought a whole pile of them um, they're, uh, they're carbide uh, they're about two inches long quarter inch diameter and they have four flutes and 
actually you can plunge mill with these because the two of the flutes that are opposite one another, um, they're like a, a slot drill. Um, you probably can't see it there. I hope you can, but um, they're, they've got some form of a coating on them, a gold coating. I don't know what it is. Um, I never really bothered to to find out. I just bought them and, and that was that. But you'll see that, or you should see, that the, the there's no sharp corners. The, the corners have been cut off at 45 degrees and uh, and uh, they, they machine really really nice so that's what I'm using and so I'll just carry on now okay I, I do a climb mill and I go up one side and come down the other I don't know what the speed is Probably about, I don't know, 1500, I don't know, maybe 12, 84 town now. I don't know whether you can see the colour. It's um, it's more of a copper, a, a, well, it's a brassy colour, but it looks as though it's got some. I think it's got copper in in it. I'm not sure what it is. I, I believe it's it's um, it's stuff that they use in autos for free machining uh, components. I, uh, I just, just uh, while I'm doing this, I'll just have a little chat with you and, and tell you a little bit. Uh, I started off as a, at the age of 15, as a Turner Improver, uh, and um, Turner Improver, and then. I went into the army for two years, national service, then I came out and did a few, not even a couple of years I don't think, in the, in the London post office as a plumber's mate, and, um, and then uh, my brother contacted me uh, one day and said that there were two brothers that had a a custom machine shop in southwest London and they were looking for somebody so I quit the post office and I joined the brothers and uh, and that was really the beginning of my tool and die uh, education I stayed there for about eight years, and then I stayed about eight years, and then I moved to Cornwall, the southwest of England, and got a job with an American company called Ranko Controls, 
Um, and uh, I worked in the tour room there. There were about, oh, I guess there were at least 30 tool, tool and die makers there, uh, apprentices and, and old hands. And um, so, of course, I was too old by then to even think about an apprenticeship. So up until about 90, about nine, 1990, I had no qualifications whatsoever, um, only on the job experience. And uh, so anyway, um, I got a job uh, in Winnipeg, and I stayed there for about five years. Then I got an opportunity of working uh, at the Manitoba Treatment, Manitoba Cancer Treatment uh, Centre in the medical devices there, which was under the, uh, I guess, you could, under the, the hand of uh, the physics department, and um, I stayed there until retirement. Uh, so, um, I, I haven't had a lot of jobs, but they've all been without any qualifications at all, and I seem to have done okay. Um, never got fired um, so around about 1990 I was compelled to sit for my exam as tall and die while I was in Winnipeg um, and uh, I wouldn't have bothered otherwise but I was more or less compelled to uh, to sit it, so I went and did my uh, practical um, uh, one Friday afternoon and passed that, and then and then I went to the college uh, one Friday. And, uh, and did my samples at Tall and Die. I had to make a punch and die. And um, I did that. It took me a whole day, mind you, but I mean, some of the machines there were in a pretty bad state, of, as you can imagine, with young, young apprentices working on them. Uh, but anyway, the guy, the inspector, looked at my job and and says one of the nicest he's seen for a long time. So um, that was gratifying for me. So anyway, that's basically my experience. My experience has been all on the job. Uh, there's lots of things I don't know. Uh, I don't bother with feeds and speeds and stuff like that. Uh, so, I can't say that I'm a top notch, but I get by. And uh, I guess that's the main thing. I've always, everyone's always been happy with my work, so, okay. Shouldn't really be talking to machinists at the same time. It's like talking and tapping. Fatal. If you're talking while you're tapping a hole. Okay, I'm up to 192. I've got to go to 214.
I learned quite a bit when I was working at Ranko. Obviously, it's a, it was a busy, a busy uh, company, and uh, I worked on some beautiful dyes, um, different types of dyes, progression dyes, and um, really complicated components. I guess very similar to um, um, uh, companies like Amphenol, which uh, I applied for before I came over to Canada, and they told me to come and see them. They were interested, but. Uh, they couldn't guarantee anything until they saw me. But uh, I guess I've been lucky. I've, I've had a pretty good life in in the uh, tool and die trade. Um, I guess I had a, an aptitude for it. Um, I used to play truant when I was at school, when I was about eight or nine in junior school. And uh, I used to stand outside a cobbler's, an old cobbler's shop in southwest London instead of going to school and I stood outside on the doorway looking at all the flat belts whizzing around on the overhead uh, overhead drives and uh, I can't remember much of it uh, but he was a pretty nice man that was in there he invited me in after seeing me several times standing out there instead of being in school and uh, he invited me in and he got me cutting heels ready for tips and, and uh, uh, bluing the, the edge of the new leather um, to make it whether it, to make it look uh, as though it belonged to the shoe. If the shoe was brown, it would be brown wax. And uh, always messing around with opening watches and trying to put them back together again and failing. But, uh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy producing something from an old piece of rusty metal or an old casting and winding up with something that looks shiny and and nice. Okay, I've got uh, six more. Six hour, last cut. Nice little milling machine this, very nice. Yeah, pretty good for its size and, and the material.
हो जाए Okay, I'm gonna switch off. I should have turned the TV off. Oh, somebody's using the vernier. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll switch off and I'll get back when I've got it set up for a 